Hi, welcome to the Property Gurus. This video is the next in a series of videos looking at the renovation of a 1930s semi-detached house that was completed recently. Each video looks at a different aspect of the renovation and the slides you can see here are shots showing the house as it was originally. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and we hope you enjoy the video. This video is all about the structural work that we undertook on the renovation of this property. Now structural works can really transform a house and we sat down and went through in great detail what we thought would turn this house from an old property that wasn't working, that really didn't have the flow that it needed into a more modern, efficient family home for today's living. So we'll go through that in some detail in a minute, but the idea of this video is really to show you how simple it can be to just make a couple of changes that will really change the way that this house operates. So it's all about design and thinking through what can be done and what is, should be done, and also not doing too much. It's easy when you're doing a renovation property to try to do too many things to really think I'm going to completely remodel this property. You don't always need to do that. Sometimes just a couple of simple changes will really change the way the house operates and give you that desired outcome that you're after. So this video will show you exactly what we did on this property and hopefully will give you the ideas that you're looking for to create your dream home. So let's have a look at the floor plans of this property. We covered this in some detail in the first video of this series, but let's recap on what the proposed changes were. We'll look at the ground floor. The problem we had here was that it felt very small and old fashioned because we had a separate dining room and what they called breakfast room on this graphic, which is from the estate agent. And both of those rooms were really small, they had light issues in terms of feeling dark and a little bit oppressive and just didn't have that relationship with the kitchen that everybody's looking for these days. So it was obvious to us when we walked around the property that that was really the main change that we needed to make. To take out the wall between the dining room and the breakfast room to create a one big open plan space that incorporated dining room, breakfast room and kitchen. The other issue that we needed to address was the back door which was originally situated in the small kitchen and was restricting the amount of usable workspace and just wasn't helping with the flow of the property. So they were the two key issues that we needed to address. So the first thing to do was to get our architect in and he came in and did a full measure of the whole property and produced these scale drawings of the property which show exactly the same layout on the ground floor. The next stage was to incorporate the changes. So you can see here that the wall between the dining room and the breakfast room has been removed and we're showing a steel support in the ceiling in replacement of that wall. And the benefit of opening up the three rooms so that they become one large space is that the double doors that were previously just restricted to the dining room now are available to the whole space and by having that point of entry and exit in the larger space meant that we could block up the back door to the house and create a u-shaped kitchen and, and utilize all of that small space for kitchen the next step was to get our structural engineer to draw up some structural drawings and these are different to architects drawings and we can talk about that in other videos but he had to do an assessment of what we needed to insert in terms of the steel replacing the wall that was being taken out and then he had to produce the associated calculations which as you can see this is just one page of a 20 page document are quite involved and have to take into account the whole weight of the house and everything that potentially could happen in terms of the steel that needs to go in to replace that wall. However, as you'll see in a minute, structural engineers also have to come to site and check the job themselves when we start to do the building work and establish exactly what the situation is and whether or not they need to change their view on the proposed steel. 
So we got in a structural engineer and it turned out that all of the walls going from front to back were non-structural. So the only structural walls are these ones that go from side to side. They're the ones holding up the rest of the house. These ones going from front to back were not. And you can check that when you look at the joists in your property. Depending on which way they go, will tell you which are the supporting walls. So the joists should go across from one supporting wall to the other. So if they're going from side to side or front to back, will tell you whether or not the walls that they're sitting on are, support, are supporting the property. We got the structural engineer in, he told us this wall was not, not structural, and therefore we were able to take it out without needing to put a steel beam in here. That saved us a significant amount of money and made the removal much easier to do because it essentially meant we could just take down the wall and that was enough, that was, that was the job done. We just then needed to make good all of the damage. So taking out the wall that was previously here then meant that we created a much larger space. So this room now is about six meters from side to side and about four meters from front to back. Previously, we had two relatively small spaces that made the house feel small and enclosed. So taking out that wall was the first structural issue that we attended to. The other building work structural changes we did in conjunction with removing this wall was that the door that was previously here, which was the door into this dining room, uh, we've obviously removed that and bricked it up. Uh, so that's all been done. So if we go back into the if we go back into the hallway, you can see that as we come through now, there is just one single door which takes us through into the kitchen diner. And then previously, where the door was here, so this was the door to the dining room, we've blocked this up and we've plastered this and painted it in. So you would never know, when you come into this room house now, you would never know that previously there was a door here. It just looks like it's always been wall. And we designed it specifically in that way. So you need to bear in mind things like which way your door will open. So we've got this door opening onto this dead wall. So where the previous door was, that's now dead. So that all opens here. And that then means it feels much more spacious. And then as you come through into the room itself, the other side of this is now a little stub wall. So if we have a look at that, we flip this camera around. So if we have a look at what we've created, where the new doorway is, the old door is now a stub wall, and that's perfect because you, it's about the same dimensions as a sofa. So when you step back and look at the room, it starts to, start make, it starts to make sense that you can then have your sofa here alongside the back wall, and that looks out uh, not only onto the garden, which is a nice space, but you could have a TV mounted here, or you could put a TV here. You might want an L-shaped sofa in that corner. So it starts helping. If you start thinking about how the furniture will work in a room and how you will live here, it starts helping you to shape those decisions on what to do, because we could have put, instead of putting the door here, we could have put the door to the room in this way and blocked that section up here so that it was a complete reverse of this arrangement. But we felt that this was the best choice because when you come through this door, it takes you directly opposite to the kitchen. So you can walk straight through the house to the kitchen if you want to, or you can come straight through that door to the double doors to go out to the garden if you're having a barbecue. And we just felt that that then enabled the living space to work better to have the sofa here. If we'd have had the door on this wall, then it would have been more of a challenge because this space would have been useless in terms of you can't really put anything here and you can't have a sofa because we've got a utility space there and the kitchen's there. So it would have basically meant you'd only had to be able to have your sofa along this wall. That then means you need to move the radiator. So the radiator would have to go on the back wall and it changes all of the plumbing. The plumbing was already in place with the radiator in that spot. So there's a lot of knock-on factors. When you make a decision as to remove a wall, you then have to think through, where do I put the door? How does that work for the room? Where's the furniture gonna go? Where does the radiator go? And it really, it starts to have a compound effect on your decision-making process. So it's not just a case of take a wall out 
and that's the end of the thought process. You need to think through exactly what you're going to do with the doorway, with the room, with the heating, with the flow, because it's all about flow. When you look here, we can go from the front door all the way through, through this, all the way through either to the kitchen or to the outdoor. So it helps the flow of this house. Removing that wall has really opened up this whole space and made it a much more usable, modern space for, the, for a family to live in. The next structural change was in the kitchen area. This kitchen is an old extension, so if we have a look through the side here, you can see that this has been built at some point in the last 20 or 30 years. There is a, an extension, we'll go outside and have a look at that. So if we have a look from the rear, we can see here, this was added at some point previously. So it's a nice square three meter by three meter extension with a flat roof. So it didn't look like that when we bought this property, but let's go back inside and have a look at what we did. So originally in this property, the back door was here next to this window. So we had a window and then alongside it was the back door of the property. So it was an old fashioned back door. That meant that in the kitchen area itself, where the back door was, which is here, it really restricted the amount of kitchen space that you had because that side of the wall was taken up with the door and you could only use two thirds of the kitchen for actual units. So our first job was to remove that back door. So we bricked that up and you can see outside. Let me just have a quick look there again. We bricked it up and then we have re-rendered that whole wall. So there's no evidence now that there was ever a back door there. So we've just put some block work in there, rendered over the top, and then um, we painted that in. So there's no real lasting memory of that door. It's only because we know it was there because we took it out. The reason that we took that out was it enabled us to create a galley kitchen on all three sides. So you can see now that we've got units on all three sides of this kitchen. So bricking up that back door and plastering over really helped us to create a much bigger usable space. We did have the option of removing this window, so we could have bricked that window up as well and had one complete wall. And if we'd have done that, then we would have been able to put more units on the wall like we've done on the wall opposite. However, we decided that because it's a small kitchen and it's a relatively enclosed space, if this window was removed so we just had more wall along this line, we felt it would make it a bit dark and claustrophobic. So we wanted to have more light and having dual aspect gives it quite a nice feature. So you can see the back window, you can see the garden. And looking out of this window, you can see across to the neighbor's house and up into the sky. It, it just makes it feel a lot more spacious. And we decided to put in a picture frame window. So this is one single piece of glass, makes it feel bigger, more spacious. It's not broken up like this window with different opening units and plastic. It's a lovely feature window and it really, it, it almost acts like a picture frame. It's not a particularly attractive picture. It's a picture of their house next door, but uh, you get the point. It, it just brings in more light and just makes it feel a lot more spacious. And the other benefit of doing that is it enabled us to create a windowsill here as well. And I'll talk about that in other videos. I, the, the reason behind removing the door was that we could then put in more units. That works perfectly. Leaving the window also works perfectly. So that's all the structural changes that we made. We've removed a wall. We have bricked up the back door and we bricked up one of the internal doors. That was it in terms of building work. Really simple. That took a couple of days for us to take things out and block things up and then render over. So really quick and easy, but it has transformed this house. The removal of the wall to create a large kitchen diner in this space has really made this into a modern suit, a modern family environment. Previously, it was dark, depressing, and the rooms were too small to really work. We also had a small kitchen, and previously this was just an off, this was an offshoot of, of a small room and felt really tiny. And because it came through one long space where we came through the door over here, it felt 
long, too long, too stretched out, and just didn't work. Now that this kitchen is sitting off a large kitchen diner, it just helps to modernize and make it a really nice, compact, friendly space to operate in. So that's the summary of the structural work that we've done in this property. Not a great deal. We haven't changed things dramatically, but it has had a massive impact on the internal space. So the removal of one non-supporting wall has transformed this property from old, dark, dingy and depressing living space that didn't work for modern life to new, modern, fresh and really with a great flow to it. So, so we would really recommend sitting down and thinking about do I want to take a wall out and where do I reposition the doors and do I want to close up a wall? So here we did the opposite, we closed up what was previously a doorway to make sure that this kitchen operates in the way that it should. It gave us so much more space to be able to use in this kitchen. So it was absolutely essential to the success of this whole house. The kitchen is the heart of the house and we've now made this something that's light, modern and works in the small space that we had to use. So hopefully that's given you an idea as to how the structural side of things can affect the success of your renovation project. We've been the Property Gurus. Thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up and we will see you again in the next video. Thank you.